Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 4th of March 2019 and the time has just gone 9.10 GMT. Equity markets in Europe are higher today after a very positive session in Asia last night. It was reported overnight uh, that the US and China are close to a trade deal. Uh, that same report stated uh, that the, uh, that the uh, Beijing authorities are considering uh, cutting or even eliminating um, the tariffs that are imposed on US goods imported into the US and vice versa. Uh, it was also reported that the US are contemplating uh, trimming or eliminating entirely the tariffs uh, on Chinese um, the import on the tariffs on Ch Chinese imports uh, brought into the United States. This is buoyed investor sentiment, and this isn't. If this this turned out to be true, it wouldn't be a major surprise, given that in the last few weeks, uh, the few bits and pieces of information that we have heard uh, from the trade talks have been positive. Hopes have been high for a number of weeks, and now we see a continuation of that. Um, that's basically the, the major stories of say. The last 72 hours, uh, the U.S.-China trade hubs. Uh, if we just take a look and re remember what happened at the back end of last week, uh, we had disappointing manufacturing numbers from a, a number of Eurozone countries. Uh, Italy, Spain and Germany all posted manufacturing figures which were in negative territory, contraction territory. Um, and in, in some respect, the, the poor economic indicators of the Eurozone have actually, in a, in a, in a strange way, um, have actually helped incur, have actually encouraged some traders to buy up Eurozone stocks. Uh, some traders have fallen back to the uh, the old habit of bad news is good news, uh, in that bad news for the economy is good news for the stock market, whereby there's already been a bit of talk the European Central Bank might introduce a new round of targeted liquidity. Um, and and uh, the belief is that the the worst the, the economic situation in the eurozone continues to be, or the worst it even gets, uh, it makes it more likely that the European Central Bank are going to have some sort of uh, stimulus package, be it in the form of target lending or whatever that may be. And I will be touching on the European Central Bank uh, towards the end of this video in relation to the the, the week ahead. So they're the two main drivers uh, of, of uh, global equity markets and probably the biggest stories uh, of, global, of global financial markets uh, in the past few days. So if we take a look now uh, at what's going on um, in the uh, starting off with the FTSE 100, taking a look at some of the major markets, we can see that, and this has been a common theme uh, for global stock markets um, for the last few months, the FTSE has been bouncing back since late December. Uh, we're now seeing uh, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, granted, we're not at the highs of 2018, but you know, if you can hold above the 7,040 level on the FTSE 100, we could look to press on higher from here. We could look to targeting 7,200, or this region in around here, 7,220. It acted uh, as a fairly significant area of support uh, in the back towards the back end of 2018, so it may act as significant, uh, uh, may act as a significant level uh, in the near term. As you can see here, we traded above 7,220 on a couple of occasions, but the market drifted back below. It. So keep an eye out for that area. Should be pressed on higher from here, and if we go beyond that, keep an eye out for this red line here, the 200-day moving average, which comes to play at 7,274. But should we see uh, a size would break below 7,040 in this, this area here, we could find support coming into play from this, this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, uh, which comes into play at 6,974. And we can see how it acted as both uh, resistance and support not that long ago. And if the metric has acted as support or resistance recently, it makes it more likely it will do so again in the future. And on top of that, uh, we can see that the uh, the 50 day moving average, this this blue line here is also uh, is also ticking upwards. So the 50 day moving average kind of comes into play at the same area as the 100 day moving average, and we can see that the 50 day moving average also acted as support recently. So making potentially making this this region uh, all the more important should we see a sizable sell off. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany, the DAX. Very similar picture in Germany, whereby the market has been bouncing back since late December. Uh, we're now seeing a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me, we are seeing a decent bounce back from the sell-off that we saw at the back end of last year. We recently hit multi-month highs on the DAX and the German markets. That gives indication uh, of how how, how, how uh, optimistic sentiment is. And if we can, and, and if we can continue uh, to kind of press on higher from these current levels, and we're currently at around eleven thousand six hundred and thirty-five, if we can continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region here, where this line is. Uh, it comes into play just south of 11,700, around 11,690. That area acted as a fairly significant region uh, of support uh, in, the, in the early part of 2018. So because it was significant back then, who knows, it's likely to be significant in the near term. And if we can break above 11,690, if we can get above that metric, uh, the next area to keep an eye out for will be this red line here, the two of the moving average, which comes into play at 11,855. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the big psychological number of 12,000. Now, we have been rallying for, um, well, for a few months, but also for the last few weeks. We've been in a fairly solid upward trend since the, uh, since the early, early February, so... We, a bit of a move to the downside or a pullback wouldn't be an, an entire surprise. So if you do drift lower uh, on the DAX, we could be looking at heading back down towards 11,500 or perhaps even where this uh, trend line comes into play. And if you get that trend line by drawing a line between the highs of June 2018 through July 2018 and through the highs of September 2018. Granted, I know the market traded above it a, a, a few times, but by and large, um, this trend, this, this, this trend line uh, has been reflected on a number of occasions. So if you do drop below 11,500, we could see the DAX drifting back down towards this trend line, which would come into play somewhere in the region of around 11,200, sorry, 11,280 or 11,300. Uh, and if you do drop below that, this yellow line here, the 50 moving average at uh, 11,203 may come into, uh, may come into uh, play as support. <clears throat> Excuse me. Turning our attention now to U.S. markets, starting off with the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 has been in a solid upward, uh, a solid upward trend since late December. We've managed to push, push above this red line here, the daily moving average. We've, we've closed above it on a number of occasions. And even though the U.S. markets aren't open for a number of hours, uh, the futures were in indicating the futures are indicating that we're going to open in around the 2,814.15 mark, and we could be close to a potentially significant area on the S&P 500. Um, this region here, the highs of October, November, and early December are all in around 2,817, 2,820, and given that. These, these areas all acted um, as resistance uh, back in, back in the, 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 last, the last few months of 2018. It makes it more likely that, that they're going to be significant in the near term. And like I said, given that, that the price action that we're, we're, we're tipped to open at for the S&P 500, it wouldn't be a million miles away from these levels. So if we can push higher and we can trade above, let's say, 2,820, that would be and hold above it. That would be quite significant, and it could, and it would suggest that we got further, it would point us in the, uh, point us in the direction of potentially further ground to be to be made. So we could be looking at targeting this area up around here at two thousand eight hundred and sixty-six. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting two thousand nine hundred. Uh, but if you do see a pullback, um, because we obviously there's been um, a number of pullbacks in recent weeks and months. If we do see a bit of a pullback on the S&P 500 uh, support, it might come into play from this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 2,750, and if not, from potentially this trend line here, which is, comes into play just in or just north of 2,700. It's a similar-ish situation over on the the DAX. Oh, sorry, apologies, over on the Dow Jones rather, the Dow. The Dow has made a solid comeback uh, since late December. Uh, we, we reached recently reached multi-month highs on the Dow. <clears throat> the market uh, is tipped to open um, in around 26,128. If we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the uh, the early November high of 2,678. 
2,678. And should we press on beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the psychologically important 27,000 area. If you do see any pullbacks on the Dow Jones, uh, we support my commit to play from this red line here, the eternity moving average, which comes in, which, which is, comes into play in around 25,126. And even if you drift drift below that, um, support might, might be found in around the kind of 25,000 mark. It's a big psychological number, but also coincides with this trend line here as well. We've talked a lot about uh, markets that have been pushing to the upside. Let's talk about a market that's been pushing to the downside. Uh, gold um, has been selling, as I said, a few uh, negative sessions recently. Now, the market in the wider picture has made it kind of began its bounce back in, in August. Mid August, the market started to shake off the recent downtrend that it was in. But really, from about mid November onwards, you see a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Except recently, uh, the market has managed to turn over on itself. It took off the recent lows of, of uh, early February, and we're now sitting in around the kind of 1287, 1288 mark. So we're still in the upward trend. We just, we just we've just now seen a fairly decent, um, we have seen a very decent pullback. So the market's moving lower. If we can take a look at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, negative momentum is steadily rising. So. The downward move in the underlying gold market is being confirmed um, by the steady increase in negative momentum. So for the time being, the, the sellers are, um, have the, are in control. If you do drift lower in the near term, support might be found in around the 1276 area. Um, but if the wider upward trend does manage to kick in, because like I said, it's been back recovering since since the October since, since August, and it's really been, been pushing higher since mid-November. If the wider upward trend can come back into effect. We could see it's heading, and if you do take a retake 1300, we could be looking at heading back up towards 1320. And then if you move beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 1350 or even up around 1366. Turning our attention now to Brent on the oil market, Brent crude. So, similar situation to. to, to um, to equities, Brent began its bounce back in late December, and it's been trading by and large uh, in an upward trend uh, since basically uh, throughout 2019. But recently, it has been um, has been you know, edging slightly lower, as we seem to be having a jolt higher, followed by a bit of sideways trading, or perhaps slightly to the downside, followed by another jolt higher, and so on and so forth. So. We've recently hit uh, multi-month highs last week on, on, on Brent, but the market has been drifting a small bit lower. But ultimately, if we hold above this area here at 63 spot 35, uh, we, we could see further gains being made. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the mid-November high of 68 spot 36, and beyond that, up to $70 a barrel. If you do see a break below this area here at 63 spot 35, Support might be found from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 61 spot 13. And we can see how that the that acted as both um, resistance and support not that long ago. So if metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely that will be important in the future. It's a similar, similar picture to WTI, West Texas Intermediate. The market bounced back in late December. It has been pushing higher. We have seen multi-month highs been ratcheted up recently but uh, we have been a bit lower in the very near term but ultimately once it kind of holds today above this the other line here the one to moving average in around 55 spot 19 or 55 dollars a barrel if we hold above that we could see further ground being made and we could see it's heading up towards this area here once again the kind of mid-november highs in around 58 spot 10 and if you go beyond that, we could see the psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel being brought into play. If we do see a move to the downside, support might be found from this blue line here in at 52 spot 28. Looking now at the currency markets. So looking at, say, from... Um, Mid-January onwards, broadly speaking, euro dollar has been in a downward trend. Uh, a lower low, a lower high, another lower low, and then we had a bounce back, and this could potentially be uh, another lower high. So 
while we remain south of the kind of 114 region or 114.20, uh, we could see further losses to be made on the euro dollar. And should we should we push continue to uh, should, should we continue to drive lower? We could be looking at targeting this area here in around one spot 12.16, and then a move beyond that uh, might bring the one spot 11.10 area into play. Uh, take a look now at pound dollar. So cable starting versus the US dollar. With the exception of this, this this particular candle here in early January, it's been in a broadly speaking upward trend uh, from about mid mid December onwards. As you can see here, the market um, the market the market only last week hit a level not seen since July last year. So, give an indication of actually how full a sentiment has been in relation to the pound. So, why we hold above the uh, the one thirty two area and the 130 area, which coincides with the 30 moving average, while we hold above, say, the 132 area, we could see um, this upward trend continuing. And if you look to take out uh, the one spot 33.61 area, we could be looking at targeting the June uh, early, the early high of June 2018 in at one spot 34.72. Uh, like I said, it's only if we drop, drop back below the kind of 130 area, which coincides with the 200 moving average. Because then we potentially see further ground lost, and if you do drop below that area, it could like us, take us back down towards the uh, one spot twenty-seven seventy-five area. Taking a quick look now at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our, on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you'll find the bulk of the updates that we do get posted to that section. Um, take a look at the week ahead. Um, I know I mentioned China at the top of this uh, of this video. So we have the Kaishin survey of Chinese services um, will, be, will be released on the early hours of Tuesday morning. On Tuesday, we also have the interest rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Also on Tuesday, we have um, third quarter figures from Ashted, a London listed company, but they derive the majority of their earnings in the US. I mentioned about manufacturing figures that were poor from the Eurozone. Well, we have uh, all the major uh, European, Eurozone, and UK service uh, PMI numbers coming out on Tuesday morning. Um, looking on the corporate front, uh, we have updates from two large US retailers on Tuesday, quarterly figures, uh, Coles, and also Target Corporation. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from Just Eat. On Wednesday, we also have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. On Thursday, we have the European Central Bank interest rate decision and press conference. Uh, that's arguably, arguably going to be the second most important uh, update of the week. As I mentioned, we've had recently we've had disappointing manufacturing numbers in the Eurozone. This week, tomorrow, we're going to see the services figures. And on Thursday, we're going to have the European Central Bank interest rate, interest rate decision and press conference. And recently, traders have been effectively banking on poor figures of the Eurozone, makes it more likely that we're going to have some form of uh, loosening of monetary policy, be it a tar target liquidity is what's been uh, what's been talked about recently. So keep an eye out for that on Thursday. And finally on Friday, uh, it is non-farm payrolls, uh, which is which is deemed to be the most important update of the month. Uh, please keep an eye out for the earnings component of it. Uh, on the earning on the earnings on the earnings component on a month-on-month -month basis, earnings are tipped to increase by 0.3%. Uh, where and on a year year basis they're, they're tipped to increase by 3.3 percent and essentially the more money americans earn the more likely they are to go out and spend money and keep the economy ticking along speaking of non-farm payrolls we do have we're, we're holding a live webinar here um at 13:15 gmt uh, feel free to sign up for that on our website um under cmcmarkets.com if you look under the learn section and the followed by the webinars and events you'll find that and last but not least, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.